in Syria. Let's now uh, speak to Steve Fish. You can see him there, politics professor at the University of California, joining us from uh, Berkeley, California. Steve, I, I wonder if you were able to hear that conversation that we've been having uh, so far. Uh, from your point of view, who do you believe is, is behind these attacks on the military base near Homs? Well, it has the look of an Israeli attack. And you can see why Israel might want to attack right now, because Trump has recently said that he wants to pull out of Israel. And when the Israelis asked him to please stay, he's saying, no, he's definitely, he definitely wants to leave, and he seems adamant about it. This could be showing the world, including the United States, that Israel is going to defend its own interests. The fact that this was against Iran, Iranian assets in Syria, which the Israelis regard as you know, their biggest enemy in the Middle East, could be telling. He could be saying to Trump and to the Syrians and everybody else, we're going to be here even if the Americans pull out. And what are the, what are the political ramifications of that, if that is the case? Well, in the United States, I mean, Trump has to do something sometimes that looks like he's pushing back against Putin. We have very good reason to believe, given Trump's behavior going back to the campaign, but especially since he's been in office, that he really is beholden to Putin in some way. This is the one thing he's been consistent on, is pretty much sticking with Putin. Now, he's got Bolton coming in as his new national security advisor saying, look, we're going to have to get tough with the Iranians. We're going to have to get tough with, with everybody. That's kind of Bolton's program. That means occasionally you have to criticize Putin and Russia. Plus, it's good for your political, for your own political future in the United States because everybody sees you as being in Putin's pocket. And when Trump agrees to withdraw from Syria, he's giving Putin something of great value. He hasn't been able to stop the sanctions because the will of Congress is that the sanctions be strong against Russia. He hasn't been able to do several other things for Putin, but this he can do for him. And, you know, in the broader logic of Trump trying to kind of do Putin's bidding for him, which unfortunately now looks like kind of part of what drives him, this is something he can actually offer uh, Putin, which is withdrawing from Syria. With this, he would be saying, look, we respect your sphere of influence. We're going to give you a foothold in the Middle East. You're a spheres of influence kind of guy, and I am too. Trump can say to Putin, and we're going to respect your presence there. Something we must also highlight is in terms of the, uh, the chemical weapons attack that happened uh, over the weekend, of, of course, it's not clear who's behind that yet either. Lots of conclusions are being drawn that it is uh, the Assad regime. But then they are saying, and the Russians are saying, that actually it's the rebel fighters who are trying to get the international community garnered against them. Of course they always say that, but of course it's the Assad regime. Um, I think we just have to have to kind of <laughs> look at reality as it is without listening to Russian and Syrian denials. Of course it was the Assad regime that did this chemical attack. Now, the American or Trump's dilemma here is, you know, how does he respond to that? Back in April of last year, when Assad used chemical weapons, Trump wanted to show that he was tough and he launched some Tomahawk missiles against a Syrian Air Force base. But he told Putin in advance what he was doing so Putin could warn Assad and Assad cleared his aircraft out of there. And the next day, the Air Force was being used again. So Trump knows he has to at least sound tough in the wake of a chemical, uh, chemical attack like this, all the more since last time he said, I'm doing what Obama would never do, which is attacking Syria, he's going to have to do the same thing again right now. It's clear that the, the Assad regime actually were, was what engaged in this attack, and Trump's got to figure out some way to look tough while still staying on track to try to withdraw from Syria. All right. Thank you very much, Steve Fish, a politics professor at the University of uh, California. We're continuing to get a reaction and analysis and comment uh, with regards to this story that's been breaking uh, overnight. For those of you just joining us, uh, several people have died or were injured after a military airport in Syria came under missile attack, according to the country's state media. But as yet, nobody has taken responsibility for that attack. Let's continue with our coverage and get some analysis on this. We're joined now by David Mackey, who's a freelance John journalist and commentator on uh, Syria, Danny, should I say. He's currently in Damascus. Uh, Danny, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Tell us what you're hearing where you are about this. Well, I mean, many residents of Eastern Homs uh, awoke uh, late this evening or earlier this morning, I should say, to a, to a number of, of different large bands 
which were heard in the T-4 military airbase in eastern Homs near the Palmyra area. Now, initially, the reaction from Damascus has been that this is likely to be a U.S. strike after the alleged chemical attack yesterday. And it was almost confirmed in the early hours of today that up to 20 different missiles have hit this particular airbase, which was previously struck by the Israelis at some point last year. Now, after the situation became far more clearer, it was apparent that it wasn't the US which actually claimed a responsibility for the attack, but it was more likely the Israelis who have previous history with Syria and especially this particular airbase. Now, the, the reports which I'm hearing from the actual airbase itself was that 20 missiles or rockets landed, eight of them were, were intercepted by Syrian air defences. And the maintenance site of this particular airport was, was damaged and destroyed. A number of different drones were also attacked and destroyed. Now, what we do know from this particular airbase is that it is shared by the Syrian army and Iranian-backed militias who have previously been known to, be, to have a large presence in the area. Now, what is very interesting is that the recent uh, downing of an Israeli F-16 jet was actually instigated by an Iranian drone coming to the Israeli-Syrian borders from this particular airbase, which started off the maneuvers which led to the downing of an Israeli jet. So this particular airbase has a sensitivity in terms of um, covering different areas of Damascus at, uh, uh, and the border area because it's based in the middle of Syria. And so... Obviously, you're telling us what you're hearing, where you are, the ex you know the extent of the damage, etc. Many of the analysts that we've spoken to are, are saying that because of the size of this attack, uh, it, it's not the United States behind it. Also, the Pentagon have strongly uh, denied that it is a U.S. Uh, military attack. Therefore, many are pointing the finger to Israel now as 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 the source of of this attack. What would that mean from your perspective if that were the case? Well, absolutely. It's more likely and it's more con the more convincing argument at the moment that it isn't a U.S. attack due to the, the volume of the missiles that actually launched. Now, if it is an Israeli attack, then that has serious repercussions in the sense that this is not related to the alleged chemical weapons attack yesterday and it's not related to the events in Eastern Water. This is a completely different subject where the Israelis have bided their time and are now retaliating uh, for their jet, which was, which was downed by Syrian forces a couple of months ago. I mean, th this would be the perfect time for Israel to strike Syria because the Syrians are actually waiting for a reaction from Trump after the series of tweets and the chemical weapons accusations yesterday. And the evacuation of Jaysh al-Islam from, from Eastern Quarter has added another dimension to this. So between these two large events, Israel has, has kind of sneaked in, if you like, and attack this particular airbase. And this is more of a lesson uh, f for the Iranians to take from rather than the Syrians, because this particular base has a large Iranian presence, as, as was previously discussed. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, giving us your analysis, your perspective on what's going on, a freelance journalist based in Damascus. Now, let's take a look at some other stories today.